Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Now in the world's marine waters, there are plenty of creatures that have powerful natural weapons, and they can be used either to defend themselves from predators, or to help them catch their prey. And in this video I'll be covering some of these weapons, as I'll be going through 5 marine creatures with some of the best natural weapons. And for our first species we'll be heading to the warm waters of the Indian and Pacific Ocean, as we have the mantis shrimp. Now if you've ever seen a mantis shrimp in the wild or in an aquarium, you may notice that they don't act like most shrimp, as they're quite intelligent and are normally solitary, and this may be because they're not actually shrimp, as they're actually marine crustaceans of the order Stomatopoda. And although they're related to crabs, lobsters, and of course shrimp, they branched off from other crustaceans around 340 million years ago. The peacock mantis shrimp is probably the most popular and well-known species of mantis shrimp, but there are over 450 species on the planet today, most of them reaching around 10 centimeters long, but the largest species can reach a size of around 40 centimeters or 15 inches. And in their native habitat, they're relatively shy species, with some of them spending most of the day burrowed in the substrate, and others hiding around rocks and corals. Although mantis shrimp have a very effective hidden weapon, they are still preyed upon by larger ocean predators, such as sharks, bluefin tuna and barracuda, but if you were a predator looking for an easy meal, you might want to stay away from the mantis shrimp. As some species, such as the peacock mantis shrimp, have two appendages near the front of their body, which they use to pummel their prey and even potential predators. The mantis shrimp's punch isn't like that of any other creature, as they spring forth from their body at around 50 miles per hour, and this punch accelerates quicker than the 22 caliber bullet, and this results in the water around its appendages boiling for a very brief moment. And although a peacock mantis shrimp weighs roughly the same weight as a basketball, they can deliver 160 pounds of force through their dactyls. The mantis shrimp's powerful punch means that it can feed on a wide range of hard-shelled foods. Because of this unrivaled power, they're rarely seen in conventional aquariums, as they can easily smash glass and kill anything else in their tank. Not all mantis shrimp possess these large clubs, as mantis shrimp are usually split into two groups, the smashers and the spearers. Although these spearers don't move quite as fast as the smashers, they're used to pierce their prey, which is usually worms and fish. So even though it's not really a shrimp, it does have some of the most impressive weaponry in the animal kingdom. But for our next species, we'll be heading to temperate waters worldwide, as we have the fresher sharks. There are three species of fresher shark on the planet today, and they are known for their long fins and their graceful swimming. And if you do happen to find yourself sharing the water with a fresher shark, there's no need to worry, as you are not on the menu for this species, and they're mostly harmless, with there being only one recorded provoked attack, where a man held on to the tail of a fresher shark. The largest known fresher sharks can reach a maximum size of around 6 meters or 20 feet long, but in most cases the tail makes up the majority of this size. Although some fresher sharks are occasionally sighted in shallow inshore waters, they're primarily a pelagic species, preferring open ocean conditions. And in these waters, they mainly feed on schooling fish, such as bluefish, juvenile tuna, and mackerel. And to catch these prey items, they use their beautiful elongated tail as a weapon. They usually position themselves beneath a school of fish before violently thrusting their tail towards them. And this often knocks the fish off balance or completely splits them in half. These injured fish are then easy to mop up, and this excludes the need to chase after. To, them. to this day, fresher sharks are still shrouded in mystery, as although there are three known species, there is thought to be a possible existence of a fourth species, with only one DNA sample being retrieved. So it turns out one of the things that makes this shark so unique is also a very effective weapon. But for our next species, we'll be heading to the Indian, Pacific, and Caribbean oceans, as we have the cone snails. Now there are over 600 species of cone snails, which come in a number of shapes, sizes, and patterns, with the largest species reaching a maximum size of around 26 cm centimeters, or just over 10 inches. And when most people think of aquatic snails, they think of slow-moving species that generally feed on plant matter or detritus. Cone snails are very different, as they're actually prolific predators, with smaller species mostly hunting marine worms, and larger species going after small fish. And as cone snails are still relatively slow, they have evolved a very effective weapon, which can stop fast-moving prey in their tracks. As cone snails have a modified radular tooth, which works in a very similar way to a hypodermic needle, as this tooth is attached to a venom gland, which in turn administers venom into their prey. This venom usually paralyzes its prey, so it can be eventually engulfed by this snail. The toxicity varies in species, as the small cone snails are known to have a sting no worse than a bee sting, whereas the larger cone snails can have a sting that's even fatal to humans. If you see one of these snails in the wild, there will be little to no danger, as if you leave them alone, they will happily go about their day. But as cone snails have very pretty patterning and colors, many divers choose to pick them up and take them home.
home. And if you're stung while doing this, it could be one of the biggest mistakes you make. Symptoms can be delayed for days, but the most severe cases involve muscle paralysis, changes in vision, and eventually respiratory failure. Although fatalities are very rare, this is a real possibility, so it turns out to be a very effective weapon for such an unassuming snail. Before our next species, we'll be heading to all of the oceans around the world, as we have the stingrays. Stingrays are a group of sea rays and are closely related to sharks, but unlike some species of shark, most stingrays are known to be very docile and even skittish. Although they haven't been on the planet as long as the mantis shrimps, fossil records date back to around 150 million years ago to the lower Jurassic period, and today there are around 220 species of stingray on the planet, with some of the largest reaching around 14 feet in length across the disc. Stingrays mainly feed on crustaceans and other invertebrates, and when doing so they don't use their not-so-secret weapon, as the stingrays barb is only really used in self-defense, as its close relatives, the sharks, often feed on rays, and when they are unable to hide with their camouflage alone, they will thrust their barb into predators, hoping this will deter them. Although most stingrays are venomous, most of the damage comes from the barb itself, with the venom causing swelling, muscle cramps, and possible infection from bacteria. But in the majority of cases, stingrays do not attack people, as they will only sting if threatened, or if accidentally stepped on. So although they're mostly peaceful, they do have one of the best defensive weapons in the animal kingdom. Before our next species, we'll be heading to coastal, tropical, and subtropical areas, as we have the sawfish. Now there are five species of sawfish alive today, and they are some of the largest fish in the ocean, with the largest species reaching a size of around 7.6 meters, or 25 feet long. And in the wild, they're usually found in coastal marine and brackish waters, normally along the substrate. And although they may look very similar to sharks, they're actually more closely related to skates and rays. And along their not-so-hidden weapon, they have a large number of electroreceptors, and they use these almost like a metal detector to help find their prey hiding in the substrate, and this prey is usually smaller fish and crustaceans. And once the sawfish have found their prey, they can use their saw-like rostrum to both dig in the substrate and also chop up their prey so they're easier to eat. And along their saws, they have so-called teeth, but these aren't actually teeth, as they're modified scales. Although these scales are very good at chopping up fish, they've also led to their downfall. All five sawfish species are threatened with extinction, with their numbers facing drops of around 95% in the last few years. One of the main reasons for this is overfishing, and I guess accidental fishing, as sawfish can't escape the shark fin soup trade and their large rostrum and teeth are also very good at getting caught in nets, and as they like to cruise along coastal areas where there are lots of fishing nets, this is often how they perish. And as the sawfish have a slow reproductive cycle, with females giving birth to live young once a year, it's very hard for their numbers to bounce back, and because of this they are protected, and there are multiple programs to give them a helping hand in the wild. So with a little bit of help, hopefully we'll see more of this highly adapted predator in the future. But that's about it for this video, if you know of any other ocean creatures with natural weapons, and leave them them down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye. <laughs>